City of Lost Children is based on a French film of the same name. In today's highly commercial interactive entertainment industry, it is quite a shock to see something that could be considered art. City of Lost Children is indeed artful, if not in execution, then at least in style. Okay, let's speak English. Although the game's graphics and music are works of art, the game itself suffers from horrible Resident Evil-like play control and, well, a lack of action. There may be action in the plot, but who gives a hoot about the plot when the game has such incredibly static backgrounds? The preset angles of each setting often make it difficult to see where you're going, what exact angle you're facing, or just how to get around. If you're facing just slightly away from an object, you can't touch, use, pick up, climb on, or operate it, even though it's right in front of you. Tsk, tsk, tsk. As if that weren't annoying enough, when you try to do whatever to whatever and you can't, Miette whines, I can't manage it. Or, I don't think I can manage it. Come on, girl, get yourself together and manage. Another thing we noticed is that Cygnosis used the same voice actor for Miette's friend one, weird name, that they used in Codename Tinka. Although this isn't necessarily bad, we were sick of this voice from Tenka. It's the kind of voice you can get sick of. City of Lost Children is remarkable in that you can save anywhere at any time, but with the guide, we were able to beat the game in one four-hour sitting without saving. And it's a good thing, too. A single save takes up an entire memory card. How obnoxious. It was fun seeing all the cinemas throughout the game. And as if you haven't guessed already, we'll roll the ending of City of Lost Children at the end of this segment. The bottom line on this game, though, is that the game is too short and has awful play control, making it one to pass on.